Mm -hmm. That goes on here. Mm -hmm. This goes when that time comes right after the gospel. I'm just going to switch this onto this side okay. and then come right back. Okay. You can essentially you can just stay in this piece.
Jesus loves and protects you. Welcome to your parents. This is also a great joy for you to see your child receiving the Holy Communion, that encounter with him, what you have taught them, now you will see that they will receive the communion on their own design, on their own decision, and on their own way of saying, he or she wants to be a friend to Jesus. In this context, my dear friends, I now invite you to join me at this celebration by saying, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And for the times that we may have failed, we now say together, I confess to Almighty God, unto you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly seen in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, and the Virgin, all the angels of the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. <laughs> Jesus is always a friend. Lord Jesus is always a loving and a forgiving. 
if you die. At the same time, he always gives his loving understanding unto all of you and to all of us. We commit mistakes, we commit faults, but Jesus is always there to listen, to understand, and to forgive. That's why, kids, I exhort you every time that you think you may have not done the right way, talk to Jesus, ask forgiveness from Him. And that's the reason why the communion that you will receive today will strengthen your hope and your faith. But prior to that is precisely the gift of forgiveness from Him. But since in our pandemic times, we are not able to do that as a group, as a community. So we will ask the forgiveness of God from your sins to extend to you His loving heart and His loving forgiveness. I now bless and I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us all stand in preparation for the gospel. Jesus Christ himself. 
Now it's talking about me as a priest. I have been ordained by the bishop, the greatest gift that I have received in my life to become an ordained minister of the church and to work in the name of Jesus and to celebrate precisely the sacred Eucharist. In the consecration, that part that says, do this in remembrance of me. That is the moment wherein the priest, after having blessed, or as he bled, prepares to bless the water, the, the bread, and the wine. All this now in his role, representing Christ. He blesses the body, the bread, and the wine to be converted into the body and blood of Christ. This is the greatest power a priest could receive. Thanks to God, he has blessed priests. Thanks to God, he has called human beings, men, sinful men, to work in the name of Jesus to continue the salvation which Jesus hopes and trusts and will receive from the sacred Eucharist. And that is why we are commanded by the gospel, we shall have eternal life if we receive Holy Communion. Our goal is to be in a good relationship with Jesus, our loving God, our loving Creator, our Master. St. Augustine will always remind us the greatest goal of a human being is to meet his Creator. All of us are being, have been called to meet and encounter our Creator, and that was ever since the creation has started. But man had sinned, man had turned his back and had embraced evil. The reason why we now go into the human process of how to be forgiven, of how to humble ourselves so that once again we would be blessed and be pure in our own intentions and in our own desires to be filled by the loving presence of God in us with the goal that we shall have eternal life as the promise unto us. Number two, the bread. This is a product of human's work, of human labor. But this is representing the gift and the work of the people to be offered to the altar. And that is why, if you notice during the Mass, there is a procession of the bread and the wine. The people offering unto God out of their good work, out of their sweat, in order that they would be able to make God pleasing once again to us. And we hope of God himself. As I mentioned, God is a loving and a forgiving God. There is no way that we will despise her. There is no way that we would be set aside nor be denied the forgiveness. Precisely Jesus tells us, I am the body that will feed your soul and your life. That's the reason why you and I come to the Holy Mass to receive communion, to strengthen us, to enliven our life once again. The things that we may have done wrongfully, now is the moment to say we would want to be worthy before God, opening our hearts and our lives and be able to receive the communion. But this one can only be converted into the body of God of Christ upon the blessing of the consecration when the priest would say, listen to this speech, when the priest would say, this is my body. In that moment, the bread becomes the body of Christ. And in the moment that the priest says, this is my blood. On the wine, the wine is converted into the blood of Christ. Now, that is the meaning of Holy Communion. Holy Communion is not alone for children. Holy Communion is for everyone. Kids, listen to this. You will need to receive always a Holy Communion. Probably later on, when things are going the normal situation where if we cannot come back to church always, 
then always make it a point to receive Holy Communion, to repair it. Children can only do as much when you do your part. Bring them to church, bring them to God, who is a friend to them, and they to Jesus himself. Jesus wants to communicate his love, his forgiveness, and peace and everyone. And thirdly, about the tabernacle. Who is there? Jesus himself. Not in representation, but the real body and blood of Christ. That is what our faith has taught us. He needs respect. And then we have to show him respect. Children, listen to this. When we come to the church, everyone does the make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father and of the Son, in recognition of who is here. This is not just an ordinary building. This is the house of God. This is where God stays. And this is where everyone comes and enters in order to open one's heart and one's life to talk to Jesus. Jesus is always kept at the tabernacle. That's the reason why the church, although it is a building, needs a respect. This is not an ordinary building that we find in the city. No, this is the place wherein we bow ourselves in recognition. Even those cars that are passing in front, I always see them, they make the sign of the cross. And one asks, and I think everybody knows why, because they recognize that Jesus is in this building, but it is a church. This is a building where Jesus himself is being kept in the Blessed Sacrament. This is the central place of the church. The reason why, I'll give an example, children. When you, for example, enter that door, and then you will have to cross up to that other door. No one should just pass and walk straight up to the door. But when one enters, arrives in the middle, one makes a bow. Recognizing his presence. Recognizing that he is there. I understand if little kids, you know, they roam around. I understand that. But sometimes even adults forget. So you and I, we are commanded to remind someone. We should not be ashamed to say, hey, I think the proper way to walk in the church is to bow when one enters and when one especially crosses the middle of the path. Children, I want you to do this when you come one day, okay? Raise your hands if you hear me. Children, raise your hands if you hear me. Raise your hand. I want to see you now. Good. Thank you. Now, congratulations to your parents. I know you will do your part. The Catholic is here in the school through Mrs. Farina's guidance. They have done their part as a school. The efforts were done. Now it's your turn. You should know how to continue the teaching of the Catholic faith. The teaching of the truth, the teaching about Christ, it is under your hand. And I do believe you do that because they are your children. You love them. You want to see them in a good way, in a good future, in a good relationship with Christ. So that one day, when they now they will be more, much older, they will be able to open their heart and decide for themselves, I want to be with Jesus. I want to work for Jesus, and I will do everything in the name of Jesus. Let us give these children a big applause. May I call now the girl who will be baptized today.
Ich würde lenken. So you will be baptized today. Since we are inside the celebration of the Mass, the ritual for the baptism is very much shortened. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us all stand. With faith, let us now present our petitions to God as we celebrate our first Holy Communion today. Let's pray for the Holy Church. May it feed us with God's Holy Word and with the Holy Bread of the Eucharist, giving us life eternal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our parents and our siblings our relatives and our friends, our godparents and our grandparents, that they may enjoy the gift of deep faith and peace in their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the priests, catechists, teachers, and all who helped us in preparation for our first confession and holy communion. May God bless them and bestow upon them the gifts they need for happiness and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the children who, today, for the first time, will receive the Lord Jesus in Holy Communion. May they love him with all their hearts and forever live faithfully. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our dearly departed. May the good Lord grant them mercy, forgiveness, and full blessings in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all of us gathered here. May each of us be grateful for the gift of the Eucharist and the experience and experience with faith and love this encounter with our Lord Jesus in Holy Communion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, accept these petitions that with great faith, hope, and love we offer upon your altar as we celebrate First Holy Communion with our children and their families today. We make these prayers 
in the name of your Son, who is our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that this sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For He is the true and eternal Priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer Himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as His new boy. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and our angels, with thrones and minions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the promise of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we Thank you. 
the Holy Communion will be distributed after the final lesson. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, lest thou be spoiled with the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. May sharing at the heavenly table sanctify us, Lord, we pray, so that through the body and blood of Christ, the whole family of believers may be bound together through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of the Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The man who sees and
so much for being here with us today, uh, for um, adjusting and adapting for uh, this great sacrament or the sacramental mass where we should be able to witness three sacraments of the blessing. Congratulations to our uh, students today. Let's give them a wonderful time. Make sure you stay six feet apart, guys. So back up a little, okay? <laughs> 